Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the Muscle Car Crawl at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts. And this is a 1969 Roadrunner convertible. Now keep in mind, 69 was the peak year for Roadrunner output. 82,109 were built, but roughly one in 40 was a convertible. In other words, just about 2,027. But 1969 was the year that color arrived to the Roadrunner. And I'm not talking about this car's torch red paint, but rather the horn, the special beep beep horn, which first appeared in 1968, was black in 68, but went to that sort of violet color in 1969. In fact, it stayed that color all the way through the end in 1980 with the Velare Roadrunner. But again, 69 brought color to the horn and to the engine. This one has the base 383 with 335 horsepower, but in 68, that engine would be blue. Well, for 69, 70, and 71, it went to orange. Now, the exceptions to that would be the 426 Hemi and the 440 six-pack, which would have been orange as well, never blue in 68. Uh, and also, if you had a 383 two-barrel in a lesser satellite or Belvedere, that would be a blue engine. But for 1969, the 383 high performance went to orange. Now, in this one here, the fender tag reads W1, which is short for W21, which is the styled steel wheels. Color involved there, too. The styled steel wheels had five spokes with openings between them. And on these cars, there was a splash of red paint applied to the brake drums, front and rear. But again, only with the W21 styled steel wheel. And that was kind of a cool thing. A lot of folks, hot rodders and stuff, would spray paint their brake drums red so the Kreger SS or American Racing Torque Thrust wheels would really be accentuated. So Plymouth played along. And indeed, when you got the W21 styled steel wheel in 69, you got red painted brake drums. And finally, externally, 68 Roadrunners generally had black and white Roadrunner cartoons, with the exception of the style decor group late in 68. But all 69s and further, the Roadrunner went to full color, full glorious purple, yellow, tan, orange, and we can even see the Warner Brothers Seven Arts logo. Word has it that Plymouth, Chrysler Plymouth, paid Warner Brothers $10,000 for perpetual rights to use the Roadrunner likeness and sound, and that was a heck of a deal. Again, Roadrunner was Plymouth's budget muscle car, and it really cracked open a whole new segment of the muscle car marketplace, Torino. 428 Cobra was a competitor to the Roadrunner, as was the Pontiac GTO Judge initially anyway. But again, this is a great example of an open top Roadrunner convertible. Roughly, again, one in 40 Roadrunners in 1969 was convertible. Pretty rare body style then or now. So again, 1969, the year that color arrived in the world of the Plymouth Roadrunner. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Magnanti YouTube channel.